Okay, so welcome everyone to week five prayers and meditations by the mother, seventh batch. And today we have uh, prayers uh, from Feb 10, 1914 and Feb 11, I believe. Yeah. So let us start with the first one, February 10, 1914. It's a short prayer. Uh, uh, and whoever wants to share first their reflections, please read first and then go ahead with the reflections. Yeah, whoever wants to share, please unmute and share. Hello? Yes, still, please go ahead. Yeah. 10th of February, 1914. With peace in our hearts, with light in our minds, we feel thee, O Lord, so living within us that we await events with serenity, knowing that thy path is everywhere, since we carry it in our own being, and that in all circumstances we can become the heralds of thy word, servitors of thy work. With a calm and pure devotion, we hail thee and recognize thee as the sole reality of our being. When I read this and I feel this, I try to feel this as deep as I can, something is uh, joyful in me, like, yes, yes, this is my aspiration too, but how to get there ultimately? So this is such a deep uh, level of praying that it is really done from top to toe by the mother and making for us a pathway to be able to do that also. That's my reflection. Yeah, thank you, Till. Yes, indeed, a very deep one, yes. Yeah, anyone who wants to share next, we are just sharing the reflections on this prayer, February 10, 1914. So Till just shared and whoever wants to go next, please unmute and share. Manikaji, if I can go next. Yes, please, Tishmaji. Yes. Yeah. I, I, so here, the of course, it's a very short, short prayer. The best thing which I liked here, <clears throat> uh, which I noticed, where Mandar is saying, knowing that thy path is everywhere, since we carry it in our being, and that in all circumstances, we can become heralds of thy word, the servitors of thy work, the servitors of thy work. And when I read this, what it connected to me is um, when much later somebody had asked mother, the children, that is it always the best happens? Like we know, like in India, says we say that always the best happens because divine is always doing the best. And <clears throat> so somebody is asking mother, is, is, is it true that always the very best happens? And mother is responding, yes, always the very best happens, but from yogic point of view. That is, if you accept everything that what is happening is your best for your inner growth, then actually the very best is happening. And when I reflected, I thought it's a very positive way of seeing. If we see the mistakes are our learnings, the failures are up to our preparations, and the positive side, the successes are just milestones. The success is not always a destination, what we call as success. It's just a milestone for bigger success, for bigger perfection, let's say. And here, that is what Mother is saying, that if we have that peace, if we have that living, the divine is living within us, all of us, we are not conscious of it. If we have conscious of it, then anything that we do, if we do it as a part of offering, as, as an offering, if any work we undertake, we constantly remember and do it as an offering, then any result which comes is also as if it is. it has been granted by the divine. And if we look it, probably which we will see in the next prayer, if you look it from the eternal point of view, 
impact and that was supposed to happen for our growth or development and the biggest thing is we feel extremely calm and peaceful if anything that is supposed to happen with me is happening right now then there should not be any inner turmoil in the problem with us that is what i wanted to share about this yeah beautiful thank you so much jishnu ji yes yeah anyone who wants to go next anything that you liked from this prayer any reflection coming up my perspective is of yeah. a newbie into all of this and i just have to say that after that last comment i'm sitting here just laughing away because if you say that everything it's the highest and it's true the best is actually happening except that we are individual ones that's the best that we can conjure up or the best that we can bring to ourselves at that point in time so this is why i'm finding this in both enlightening and humorous thank you yeah beautiful thank you so much lotus yeah <laughs> yeah i think we suffer much uh, with our resistance to whatever is happening most of the time yeah Yeah, Shweta, please go ahead, Shweta. Yeah, yeah. And, and I also want to just share what uh, you know stood out for me. Like Tishnu ji also said, uh, uh, "Thy path is everywhere." Since we carry it in our own being, and that in all circumstances we can become the heralds of Thy word, the servitors of Thy work. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I, as you know, Tishnu ji was mentioning that. Uh, Uh, things happen and uh, yet you know like uh, there will be this uh, innate peace and you know like uh, i i i really like that it was a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, what do i say it was a lot of consolation for me because uh, in many ways i feel it also these days so it's like i see a lot of uh, small and big disruptions uh, and challenges so it's just you know like a way of life uh, which uh, comes more and more into notice now why it's coming more and more into notice is because yes there is this uh, faith also which is increasing and you know like that uh, uh, peace also uh, which is uh, constantly there when you come back to the presence and understand that uh, yes uh, uh, things are very spontaneous and uh, uh, you know there are yet you know like disruptions and all yet there is also this uh, uh, faith and solace that you know everything is happening uh, as per you know like the way it is meant to be so this path uh, this line thy path is everywhere and we carry it in our own being and that in all circumstances we can become the heralds of thy word the servitors of thy work yeah this this really you know like uh, stood out for me in this prayer yeah beautiful thank you so much shweta yes yeah anyone wants to go next yes ashpriya you know what really is uh, i mean i think uh, i'm also going through a lot of uh, struggle in understanding uh, you know what is ambition and what is you know how exactly to you know path and all of those things right so i mean the things that really uh, is standing out in this prayer is that you know it's thy path and you know thy words and thy work so not that everything i will understand right now but the fact that you know i would still know that it is you know both good and bad and you know whatever is it it's part of you know that work which i am right now probably not understanding you know and to uh, be all right with not understanding is also something uh, which we often forget because we are in the hurry of understanding or hurry of you know go you know becoming something but this moment is also that becoming and there is nothing in the future which is all which i mean there is a future of course which 
includes uh, which is in that becoming as well but now is also becoming i think uh, that is how i could relate to this uh, yeah yeah thank you so much ashpriya yes yeah anyone who wants to share next anything on this prayer i think it's really beautiful um if we can have the peace in our hearts mostly our hearts are in turmoil mostly many a times we find ourselves in too much confusion and conflict in our hearts owing to the entanglements attachments that we have so i think the first line itself if it can happen you know with peace in our hearts uh with light in our minds and so again very very beautiful and a mind which has light in it uh and a kind of an enlightened mind uh, a mind full of light not full of all the discussion and confusion i think that itself is so much beauty uh something tells you that you are at the right place as jishnu ji was sharing that you feel that peace within once you take the decision which is uh, according to the divine will uh, with peace in our hearts with light in our minds we feel the and this also uh, i would take it vice versa also that many a times without peace in our hearts and without light in our minds we are unable to feel the divine presence and many a times it happens that the entanglements or emotional overwhelms is so much we are so lost in the drama or the story in our head that we are unable to feel the divine presence that also happens and the opposite is that when we have peace in our hearts the light is there in our mind then we are able to feel the divine presence which is 24/7 there but uh, we are somewhere lost most of the times we are not present to the divine presence oh lord so living within us you know it's like alive within us that we await events with serenity knowing that thy path is everywhere so if we can have that faith and confidence that whatever path we are on whether it may look actually tumultuous at the moment very full of turmoil at the moment uh, as i think uh, ashpriya was mentioning that there must be something good coming out of this bad phase you know many a times we go through very overwhelming phases uh, thy path is everywhere since we carry it in our own being and that in all circumstances we can become her the heralds of thy word the servitors of thy work so if we have we can have a little bit just a streak of receptive openness just a streak of a little faith that yes the faith phase that i'm going through is a tough one right now but uh, maybe something i i'll be shown through this phase you know let me go through this let me go through persevere so i think there we become the herald if we can have that a little openness little receptivity and when we are not resisting any phase in our life most of the time we are suffering because we are resisting the phases in our life and the phases are not always happy phases we all have our ups and downs so then if we can have that little openness receptivity and uh, knowing that yes something good will come out i will mature and ripen through this phase also we can become heralds of thy word the servitors of thy work and the divine work is to become conscious and conscious and more and more conscious of my own inner movements you know that's the basic inner work that is to be done to become more and more conscious of all that happens in our being with a calm and pure devotion we hail thee so a part may be in turmoil the outer personality may be in turmoil but a deeper part will always be uh, having this faith and certitude and a little calm that yes yes you know this too shall pass and i will gain and learn through these experiences whatever ups and downs may be happening so that calm parallelly can be there along with the outer turmoil that's the beauty and uh, you know this reminds me that shri aurobindo once 
shared with the sadhak that he was undergoing depression at one point of time and even when he was uh, undergoing depression uh, he was actually able uh, able to give very good advice to uh, people who would come to him so uh, some part was under turmoil and yet there was a deeper part which was totally settled and secure and safe and there the calmness and purity resides so almost like a you know lotus in the dirt and mud that uh, in in the middle of the challenging situations and outer conflicts one can actually be the lotus both can exist parallelly with a calm and pure devotion we hail thee and recognize thee as the sole reality of our being so to wake up from our dreams from time to time you know uh, we we are dreaming not only at night we are also most of the time dreaming in the day time we are so lost in our self created realities in our head that we think that they are they are having some solid reality uh, you know self existent solid reality and they exist on their own while we we become only uh, late very late if possible early we become aware that we are creating that solidity in our reality in our head it has no existence whatsoever if i stop fueling it in my head so the only reality the sole reality of our being is the divine presence rest all are figments of our imaginations the conscious presence that we are the consciousness that we are if we can again and again root and anchor ourselves there know that as the soul reality rather than my dream uh, the day day dreaming that i do as the soul reality rather than taking that as reality if i can anchor myself in the divine presence i think that would be so beautiful so this prayer really you know uh, all of you were sharing comes as a very deep reminder a very short one and very very intense one so very blessed to read this prayer again yeah so monika ji here yes, i want to say one thing that yes, um, like we all feel first of all it's a very high ideal right that to always be conscious and constantly have that remembrance mother is saying it's like the crown of your work it is not something that comes in the beginning and second that acceptance uh, that everything that is happening is is which we deserve which we which is the right thing happening naturally it's a very when it happens naturally we are at the most peaceful and calm state but uh, so muraji desai he was ex prime minister of india and he was a political figure once 30s he had written to shrobindo that uh, that he want he was practicing gita and he wanted to do nishkam karma that is like this something of that you were not bound by the results whatever is happening is fine but he found it difficult to pr- practice and then i remember shrivan the wrote to him that practicing this nishkama karma that is without any result is a long and a very long and arduous process until that happens one has to work according to one's nature which he meant is like somebody was speaking just about ambitions the thing is it is not wrong we at times feel when we read such things we feel am i doing something wrong and here shrivan this guidance and not only shrivan the many other other uh, uh, realized people beings their guidance is till you have realized you should do which you feel what is the best thing as per your knowledge and understanding and see where it leads to you and once you understand the truth or futility whichever way whichever path you are taking either the truth or futility then that path will take you to the next step one should not jump you know it's like a university exam one doesn't go to the university from after birth right they take they spend 12 years 5 3 years 2 years and then they go to university so it is that we all are at different stages of evolution all of us Uh, so hence we should not jump no that is this is how it should be it is the aim and the ideal but all, for all of us plus minus but we should take things as we are wherever we are and practice however it is possible and the second thing is 
like you said most probably it was about dilip roy that who was having depression whereas he could guide and i was reading this uh, that recent book i think new conversations with mother right or new correspondences with mother which is which was not part of the collected works but has been published recently and there i saw the correspondence with dhuman champaklal prithvi singh nahar and all they have been i mean great figures in the ashram life right? like secretary and others and what i saw is that all of them when they started in their early correspondences they had the same doubt depression difficulties maybe higher maybe lower but what all of us are facing here so just because when we say that okay there is problem there are challenges there is drama in our life it is not unique it is not something which is happening to us uh, which has not happened to others and what i mean to say is we should not think that some we should not be little ourselves because something which is happening to ourselves it is ha- it has happened to others it is happening to us and it is part of the process all these big sagas i read wherever they are candid of may often what happens is because of course of time all these smaller conversations get lost and only the lofty conversations remain but if we examine and if we understand and we go through including not only in shrivanda ashram even in ramkrishna mission the greatest of the saints in their letters personal letters especially in their early years i have seen including vivekananda that they have been uh, impacted with doubt depression lack of faith lack of faith can you imagine uh, that's that's something which we we all feel we all know right that once faith comes everything and all of them are they are not having complete faith they are not having complete things they are speaking about insincerity probably their scale is different but it is part of the process part of, it is a part of the part of the path for all of us Thank, thank you, you thank you so much thank yeah. you so much uh, for you know seeing uh, you know what you said and you know uh, i think uh, when we really are close to those uh, emotions which are difficult emotions i think we 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 sense that thing that you know just uh, people say that uh, all of those are also part of uh, uh, divine We, in rejection we kind of you know uh, we don't act, i mean in rejection we make it even more difficult they are manifesting probably for a reason the difficulties of the emotion to whatever are manifesting for a reason because that is the path to you know uh, to me you know to remove that if it doesn't surface you know then then it will forever remain and we will forever i mean that is the way they are coming up to light is is something which have you know jab started sensing with you really good and thank you for yeah. you know for saying this thank you you so say here i will just make one small very comment see rejection and repression are not same <clears throat> shrivinda has spoke mother has spoken what is that monika ji i'm forgetting aspiration rejection surrender aspiration rejection surrender and but rejection is not repression or suppression we all know but if we things are repressed repressed means it is there you have just talked it rejection means you are conscious you have consciously taken a decision of not doing or rejecting a certain thing of course it will bother you so these things if we read patanjali yoga sutra or shobindra's letters of yoga we will know that shobindra is saying certain things once you repress or once you start rejecting it will go from conscious mind to subconscious mind that those things come back during uh, dreams then in patanjali yoga sutra they have used a beautiful term they called dagdha beej dagdha beej means if there is seed today if you have a seed you throw that seed on ground on soil it will sprout but if the seed is burnt then the form remains and it is futile it the thing comes out of it so with long practice and long period of rejection and surrendering the things what happens is it's called this seed is burned it is like a burnt seed it a form remains the human form or that form of desire or that form of 
whatever we are thinking or not we do not want that form remains but it it becomes powerless and here i will share a per- very personal experience i remember so one of my friend that is childhood friend he is in the path of kriya yoga um what happens is they have to have uh, they have to have uh, follow the path of veget i mean they have to eat they have to be ve- vegetarian and he is he eats non vegetarian food so we went to meet one monk uh, in the path of kriya yoga and my friend said uh, baba i feel this is difficult because for me i first of all from my childhood habit is i am eating non veg food and uh, suddenly it's shifting to a vegetarian food is difficult for me so this monk said so beautiful remember the answer he said do not force yourself to do anything he said once you have the right experience that experience will change you if you are doing your kriya properly you will have certain experiences which will compel you to purify your food habit and they will then you will not be able to eat anything which as per their path is impure and he said that do not compel yourself do not force yourself try to follow the path however you can once you have a right experience that experience will transform even i remember satprem said somewhere that experience unless that experience transforms you of course he was quoting from shobin unless that experience transform you it is valueless yeah thank you jishnu ji thank you ashpriya for sharing yeah thank you thank you i think in one of the prayers i think which we were reading uh, last time mother also shared the importance of innumerable experiences one has to go through you know uh, again and again uh, before uh, any absolute kind of uh, transformation happens so all these experiences as you were sharing both of you you know absolutely necessary on the path so let us go to the next prayer then and i'll just maybe remove this underlining i think it's from the last time yeah anyone who feels ready uh, to read and reflect february 11 1940 please unmute and i'll read the prayer monica reflection i'll see as in how uh, i am able to reflect sure uh, sure sir <laughs> February 11th 1914 as soon as one rises above the perception of contingencies as soon as one's consciousness is identified with thy supreme consciousness and one enters thus into that omniscience which i cannot define except as a as absolute knowledge how easy and even a little childish seem all those problems about what should or should not be done about all the resolutions to be taken from the standpoint of the eternal work the one thing important is to become conscious of thee to identify oneself with thee and to maintain that conscious identification constantly but as to what best use can be made of our physical organism thy mode of manifestation upon earth it is quite enough when thou alone art conscious within us to turn the gaze to the body in order to know beyond all doubt what is the best thing it can do what activity will most fully utilize all its energies and without attaching much importance to that activity that all together relative utilization one can take without any difficulty any in a debate decisions which to the outer consciousness appear the boldest and most dangerous how simple everything is for him him who sees all things from the height of thy eternity i hail thee o lord with a joyful and trusting devotion may the peace of thy divine love be with all beings so beautiful
Yes, so this paragraph uh, and without attaching much importance to the activity that altogether relative utilization one can take without any difficulty any inner debate decision which to the outer consciousness appears the boldest and most dangerous yeah that uh, is something uh, uh, that uh, i am uh, being able to relate to yeah Yeah, anything more, Shweta? Yeah, it's just that I want to add that, uh, you know, day after day, as, uh, you know, uh, I uh, walk into this path, there is some clarity. Uh, it's, it's in the uh, uh, form of, you know, uh, a growing inner peace, you know, a, a growing uh, connection with presence. And it's beautiful to experience this, yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. More power to you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I think it's actually, you know, uh, although we all have our own processes and journeys, but it's our birthright, actually. It's our birthright to know who we truly are. No one can keep us away from that. So all these experiences that we have to go through, they all are just maybe just necessary steps on the way in order to truly identify with our true consciousness, which mother refers to again and again in her prayers. Yeah, anyone who wants to go next? Please unmute and share. Yeah, Monica, if I can speak. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so here, uh, I felt when I read this, it's like extension, like that previous prayer was like an introduction, and this is like extension of that prayer. And uh, what I what I felt is like here, Mother is saying, contingencies means dualities. As one rises above the perception of contingencies, that is all the dualities, what we will do and not do. As soon as one consciousness is identified with thy supreme consciousness, and one enters thus into that omniscience, which I cannot define except at absolute knowledge, how easy and even at little childish seem all those problems about what should or should not be done, about all the resolutions to be taken. And mother herself, especially <clears throat> in her later years, later of physical life, when somebody asked that, uh, what are we going to do next month or something? And mother is saying, do you think I'm planning? Do, do, I, do you think that I plan for next month? And it's perfectly spontaneous. What comes to me? And if we read agenda in details about after 1963, around, mother is saying that my vital and mental has left. It is only the psychic being which has remained with the body. And it is perfectly spontaneous at each moment trying to do what the divine wants. And naturally, that's a very, very high state. But I feel what Mother is saying is like extension of the previous prayer. But we are always in this state of duality. We, we want to weigh, weigh, because we are we, we live in the... Uh, realm of reason so we want to weigh what is good for us what is right what we should do and that is because we actually don't know what is to be done we actually don't know what we should do we judge all these things based on reason okay whether if, if this is done it will be good for us if that is done that is good for us and it is right at where at which level we are because Sri and Mother is saying that reason should not be abundant first. Reason should be abundant last. Once you, once you have the intuition, then you abandon the reason. But once you have the intuition, that is once we know what is the absolute truth, once we have that touch of the eternal, then all these things become childish. 
then all this intermediary intermediary reasonable steps or the steps of reason becomes meaningless childish and one reaches the truth directly like often if people there were instances when mother is asking or shubhendra is ask uh, some people are asking mother for sri ram krishna and they are directly going to the thing that oh you when you will grow up to some one ram krishna they said when you will grow up you will become engineer that was a child and it's not that i mean they are fortune tellers or something mother is saying when i look at a person i see what its inner being wants to be and always my effort is to bring that inner being out and we all know in modern society now we if we study psychology that there is inner being in whichever form which because of society is repressed we want to fit into certain things and uh, there probably we will come in the last paragraph so mother is always even it at very material terms when i speak to some of the students i mean who were students at ashram during mother's time mother used to always encourage you want to do this always yes unless it's something very very outrageous always yes you want to run yes you want to be a pilot yes you want to cycle yes you want to do anything outrageous but adventurous absolutely yes go for mountaining she never said no always she used to encourage because she used to for all noble intentions she used to bring encourage these parts of the parts of the people so that the inner being comes out of course that is a slightly digressed now the thing is here what she is saying is from the standpoint of the eternal there is only one thing which is important that is to be conscious of the divine to identify with the divine and to maintain that conscious identification constantly and that is the truth if at each moment uh, we have discussed it in past that once as we stand in front of samadhi we feel the peace we feel aspiration once we come out we don't we are not having it or we lose it slowly it fritters down why because that moment because of the presence because of the environment we are completely at peace calm concentrated but the moment we are coming it out we are unable to retain it we are unable to retain what we are getting that connection is not there if we are able to maintain that connection always that is what mother is speaking here but as to what best use can be made of our physical organism that is at times we ask right what is the purpose of our life what is the purpose of our body thy mode of manifestation upon earth our life is the main purpose is the manifestation of the divine it is quite enough when thou alone art conscious within us to turn the gaze to the body and in order to know beyond all doubt what is the best thing to do what activity will be most fully utilize all its energies that is if we know who we are if we truly know what the divine wants us to do or there is absolutely no doubt and we will do exactly what he wants us to do and we all know that it's because of our preferences desire egoisms as well as preconceived ideas we are unable to fathom who we are as well as what the truth is and the last paragraph and without attaching much importance to the activity what mother here means what i feel is at times what we are supposed to do need not always be lofty and very high shivendra said right that you can be a great shoe maker so there were people in ashram who came uh, alok paulo alok the often says that he was asked to work in dining room he was a great professor and mother our mother asked him to do because he, that person had some ego and mother was working on him but the thing is once we understand that what we are supposed to do that activity is not important because all activities if we of if if whatever we do we are doing it it as a offering to divine and if we are conscious of that if we know that our inner being or divine wants us to do that then though no activity big or small adventure or safe it all becomes the same that all together relative utilization one can take without any difficulty any inner debate that is no confusion 
once that you have that certitude you have no confusion decisions which to outer consciousness appear the boldest and most dangerous and at times and i would always say that doesn't mean that what is bold and dangerous is only what it's been asked by the divine what is safe and secure if it is for you can also be your path the question is we don't know two persons path and never the same so for some people even at ashram to some people mother is saying no don't go out don't go out beyond the canal your 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 uh, frame is very delicate and you will not be able to manage those things to some people they are saying no you should go you should go to different countries work work for me there because to each person the path is different how simple everything is for him who sees all things from the height of the eternity because from the height of eternity what is important is whether you are having the connection with the divine consciously constantly and whether you have realized that is what is important all the other things are immaterial and childish and that is why it is very simple that what you are you are doing whether are you truly supposed to do or not i hail the o lord with a joyful and trusting devotion may the peace of thy divine love be with all beings and once we have that divine love we are always peaceful because we know that every, because we know that nothing bad or what we call bad is also supposed to happen because often there have been we know about jesus christ chaitanya dev some many other of these people who 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 had to face uh, adverse end of life and they were perfectly peaceful because they were they had that divine love with them that that is my reflection here yeah thank you so much rishnu ji thank you yeah anyone wants to add on or share their reflections chitra ji would you like to share something on this anything that you yeah yeah rishnu ji shared very deeply actually yeah because i yeah i also felt the same the first prayer and second prayer is interconnected and it is the expansion i mean because the first prayer is very profound i mean so very short but it is very profound actually because i feel following all these things that is when we avoid the events with serenity and the path is everywhere and we know we carry it in our own being and in all circumstances we can become the heralds yes i feel this the this is the sastra of integral yoga path and following all this itself is a sadhana for a lifetime i feel like that actually when i read this prayer and definitely this is the expansion second prayer and uh, this second pair also dishnu ji explained very beautifully that about that bodily manifestation yes because mother and she have been though always used to stress upon that no they never um, i mean uh, told that body is solution and you need not care about it they are always about that manifestation so here also it comes like that and uh, that third pair is very profound this is very new when vishnu ji shared that there somebody mother asked not to i mean go beyond that someone or yeah this is very beautiful to hear actually because i feel that how simple everything is for him who sees all things from the height of the eternity maybe if we go to that heights i feel that uh, that previous para will come into effect now actually that most dangerous and most boldest decision we can take only when we reach those heights i felt like that as always that uh, last uh, lines i hail the o lord with a joyful and trusting devotion may the peace of thy divine love be with all beings yes this love carries everything yes this is my share yeah. thank you thank yeah. you jita ji yes yes yeah. yeah anyone who wants to go next any lines that resonated with you any personal sharing yes, yes. claudia yes 
Good morning from Mexico. It's yeah, uh, very good morning. beautiful yeah. to hear these uh, prayers. Uh, really resonate here in my heart. And one, one thing that I, like, that I like in this prayer is that she say that we have to do this constant conscious work, like every hour, every minute, constantly remember, remember and remember, yes? In order that we don't lost in the chaos that sometimes we find uh, in every life, yes? Oh, in the inner chaos also, yes, so sometimes we pray. So I love that part to, to be, yes, to really be, um, to be the word, yes, like when you do a prayer, really make it that happen in your day, yes, make that humility happen in your day with everybody. And with yourself, you are so deep and very beautiful. I really, really like it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Claudia. Yes, I think it's uh, so easy to say <laughs> and so hard. All of us know uh, just to be is. Uh, it, talking about it appears so, so simple, you know, and as Aspriya once shared in one's prayers and meditations that it's so complicated to be simple, you know, so because we have uh, gotten so much lost in our complications that to be simple, to just be appears so, so hard work, you know, which we have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who wants to go next, any reflections to share on this prayer? I have a very short one, uh, which is uh, sort of additional to the first pink emphasized sentences, because this is uh, from the standpoint of the eternal work. Uh, the one thing important is to become conscious of thee, to identify oneself with thee, and to maintain that conscious identification constantly. This is a lifelong work, uh, the maybe life's long words um, what we have here in our uh, unchristian by birth and practicing and we have the possibility of renewal of the dedication to God to the coming of the Lord to open up his presence and that is to me very uh, refreshing because sometimes you get a bit distracted you can get a bit distracted and all what to do, how huh? you feel a bit heavy about it. But if you are offered the possibility to really renew your dedication, then it brings back hope and, uh, and the aspiration to continue on the path. That's what I wanted to share. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, Tim. Absolutely, I think it's really a lifelong dedication to this maintaining this conscious identification. And I, I think mother, mother also, Sri Aurobindo also, many other masters mystics have stressed upon this constant maintenance of remembrance. Sumiran in Hindi, the, in Hindi they call it Sumiran because since we are born in forgetfulness, it's one thing that we have to parallelly be aware of, of this conscious identification, no matter what we are doing in the world. Parallel consciousness, as mother would say, you know, one uh, incident that I had shared uh, with some of you also in one of the sessions that uh, Sadhak asked that mother, when I'm playing lawn tennis, for example, uh, then I'm not able to parallelly be conscious of you, your presence. So mother said that you don't, as Jishnuji was sharing, don't jump directly to remembering me constantly at all times do it in your gap times you know when you are not actively engaged mentally or too much uh, you know occupied in some activity and when you have a little break a, a little relaxed times uh, resting periods or break times there in those gaps 
use those gaps very, very wisely and have uh, this constant remembrance of the mother or con constant remembrance of knowing ourselves as the awareness within, being aware of being aware. And then slowly when we are in work also, we can kind of extend it. You know, again and again, we will forget. Uh, and then the only task we have is, is just to keep at it, you know, uh, that just to not get lost in the drama or the stream of thoughts and feelings and sensations again and again. Once we have done that enough, uh, once we are convinced that that is uh, really too much I have done, then to remind ourselves again and again of this conscious identification, I think really uh, one has to uh, really keep at it, uh, continuing practice, yes. Yeah. Yeah, anyone else? Uh, any Anything on this prayer? I just wanted to ask, what does that last uh, paragraph exactly mean? Which so one? The, the one which is marked in red, the second one which is marked in red. Uh, the... Without attaching? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, maybe we'll come to that now. You want to share something more, Ashpriya? No, no. No. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll talk about that a little and then if somebody has to add on, we can add on. So I think uh, this cannot be, cannot be really stressed enough, the importance of uh, this conscious identified, you know, this one mother again and again in prayers and meditations, mother is talking about this. As soon as one's Consciousness is identified with thy supreme consciousness. And again, you know, we know all of us are at different stages, but this identification, uh, all of us who are here in prayers and meditations, listening and reflecting, uh, it's very, very difficult to believe that we have not been here. You know, I, I cannot really fathom that we have not been here. Uh, although it's like a glimpse that we get and then again we lose it and that's the practice that we have to do but it's not a jump for us I believe you know that specifically the people who are here today or who are listening and are trying to understand mother's prayers and meditations the very fact that we have aspiration for this it cannot be that in few moments we have not been identified with our true consciousness and then mother says that if one enters into that communion, if one identifies uh, as that pristine awareness within, one enters thus into that omniscience, which I cannot define except as absolute knowledge, you know, a complete knowing. How easy and even a little childish seem all those problems. So at times uh, I may be lost in my drama and the story, but the moment I'm identified as awareness, as conscious presence, I'm absolutely okay. You know, I'm not swayed. And actually, my all my uh, dipping down in the drain, although it has its own you know, uh, relevance, but it actually appears childish. That, oh my God, you know, how, how, how could I fall into that again? And not in a derogatory sense, but we do fall. You know, and again. Mother says, as Ashpriya was sharing, Jishnuji was sharing in the beginning, that all the failures that we have, not really a failure, but all the getting into the trap of the story again and again, is just a work to be done. You know? So we cannot escape those experiences. It's important to have those experiences so that they come up to the light. And Mother says that, show me your darkest parts so that light can be shed upon it. So... Uh, when we are in an okay state, when we are identified more uh, with the true consciousness within, uh, the, the falling into traps here and there again and again may, may seem childish and they do seem childish. And mother in other prayers also says that at times I deplore myself when I'm not identified with thee and I also blame myself. I find it blameworthy. But then I again bask into thee, I plunge into thee and find the soul is there. So not to plunge too much in darkness and despair, but to recognize the importance of uh, the upsurge of emotions or whatever that we are going through, and then to continue the march forward. So how childish seem all those problems about what should or should not be done 
about all the resolutions to be taken. Because when we are uh, stationed as the awareness within, things are effortless. You know, the, the, the decisions become effortless. There is a knowing that is at work. But most often than not, we are not there. So we work, as Jishnuji was sharing, from the place of duality, you know, from the place of reasoning it out, for example. So there we need to exercise the reason. But when I, we are stationed as the knowing, then reason also takes a low seat you know, when the knowing comes forward. And then Mother reiterates again this beauty from the standpoint of eternal work, the work which has to be done in continued lifetimes, you know, the divine work, the one thing important is to become conscious of thee, to identify oneself with thee, and to maintain that conscious identification constantly. Lot of work. We will never be unemployed in our lifetime and also the lifetimes to come. Because we see that again and again, the vigilance is lost. Again and again, the attachment of the overwhelm of the senses becomes too heavy. You know, we are drained away in the thoughts and sensations and the identification is lost. It's not that we are not awareness at any moment, but we lose the conscious identification of it. So that's where the attempt has to be. I think someone was mentioning about being spontaneous, you know, being effortless. But before being effortless, we have to put so much of effort. You know, just like a musician plays an instrument. And whenever we are, see people playing beautiful, effortlessly, maybe a guitar or a violin, so much of effort has been put uh, in that effortless playing. So that effort, I think we have to put. Yes, Shweta, you have to say something. Yeah, I just yeah. Uh, wanted to bring this point. Like it is so different. No? Spontaneous is so different from being impulsive. You know, like uh, that's a huge uh, thing here that, um, like you said, after so much of effort, that effortlessness comes. So uh, I think uh, spontaneously knowing and going uh, for it has a, a lot more intuitive and, uh, you know, like spiritual essence to it yeah. than being impulsive. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, animals have this knowing. Animals have this knowing. For example, if an animal is not feeling well, you know, if uh, the animal recognizes there is something wrong with the tummy or some digestion or something going on, the animal would not keep on continuing search for the mate and reproduce and search for food because it knows that I should rest. So it will just lie down and maybe for days it doesn't eat. But we human beings, considering the lifestyles we have and so much lost we are in our thoughts, we have lost this touch with this intuitive knowing as you are saying. You know, And I think it's very uh, important to get in touch back with that knowing. Very, very important. You know, And we know, all of us know, it's just that we have to recreate that connection with our knowing. And that's why coming back to the body really helps uh, maintaining a connection with the breath and using the breath as a thread to come back to the body because body always tells, body has an innate knowing. So listening to that knowing, you know, that really helps. Yeah. And I would agree, resonate with what you were sharing, you know, that spontaneity is different from being impulsive, absolutely. Yeah. From the standpoint of eternal work, the one thing important is to become conscious, to identify and to maintain that conscious identification. We have agreed, you know, that is too much of work, effort, and we have to put that effort if we are uh, wanting to. But as to, and this also is very, very beautiful. I think some of you were sharing on this, but as to what best use can be made of our physical organism, where to put the physical energies, you know, otherwise the life energy would just keep on jumping up and down, up and down, you know, if you don't channelize it properly. Thy mode of manifestation upon earth, which is this body, it is quite enough when thou alone art conscious within us to turn the gaze to the body in order to know beyond all doubt what is the best thing it can do. So to connect with that intuitive knowing, which uh, I think Shweta was mentioning, to connect because the body tells, the body knows. When we are in the grip of the ego, the body tells 
our heart burns you know our organs begin to really crumble down when the body is in the state of grip of ego so the body tells but i am not ready to listen i just pop up a discipline and go back to work again so to listen to that intuitive knowing of the body you know and to uh, also listen uh, where where does it feel very very good you know where, when i put my energies into we all have that knowing you know what feels right you know as i think jishnu ji was sharing that mother would say that okay you want to do this go ahead you know because everyone has their natural swabhava you know natural tendencies inclinations so to to follow that inclination because it's for a purpose that that inclination is there to channelize our life energy there i think that's really the uniqueness that all of us have and mother also says that before we really know what is the true vocation for our life uh, true utilization of this body uh, before that uh, whenever a temporary work comes in the middle to do that temporary work with a beautiful attitude with an attitude of servitude you know that let me serve i know that this is not the purpose of my life whatever i am right now doing but let me do it with a devotion let me do it with a self offering so even if i am doing a work which may not be my real true calling in my life to do it with dedication to do it with service servitude that that's the attitude one one can take in the middle path to do the, to it best whatever we are doing what activity will most fully utilize all its energies and i see it also with my little children you know i have two little kids and i see that each one has this very different inclination so one is more kind of body oriented and he wants to jump and you know maybe run around the other one is very content maybe reading a book and one cannot really although one needs a balance you know uh, one needs to balance but as mother says from near to far so the near for one person is the body running with the body the near for the other person is to read the book and then for too far that okay the person who is too much engaged in reading the book also has to develop physically you know so the body also has to come into the picture so i think again very intuitively knowing whatever body demands uh, the life energy demands and this you know the pyrek paragraph which uh, ashpia was talking about what it comes to me here without attaching much importance to that activity that all together relative utilization one can take without any difficulty any inner debate decisions which to the outer consciousness appear the boldest and most dangerous so relatively at various phases of our life everything has a relative utility so when through my knowing through connection with the body as in the previous paragraph you know turning the gaze to the body in order to know when we connect with that we realize that okay right now maybe this is required for me maybe walk in nature may be required so relative utility of every activity now walking in the nature may not be the absolute truth uh, that may be required but right now relatively i know that this is what will channelize my energy according to my mood the nature also it appeals to me you know so uh, at any point of time any activity has a relative importance so using it relatively without attaching much importance to actually what kind of an activity that may be you know it may be actually cleaning or mopping the floor you know so that that activity itself not does not has that much of uh, credibility but it's relative importance so mother says without attaching much importance to that activity and all together relative utilization that okay you know let me go through this because the body needs it the mind may need it and then one can go through that use it in the process of the journey of life without any inner debate or decisions which to the outer consciousness appear the boldest and most dangerous so what comes to me here is that for example you know i had completed a phd and uh, a phd takes several years you know masters bachelors and then phd you know you give so many years now to an external outer consciousness you know to a person maybe even when i look at what, what all i did and maybe another person looking at it when i see that what task i am doing right now not right now what i was doing earlier was actually uh, it appears that oh my god why have you wasted so many years of research and phd when you actually had to do this 
so from the outer consciousness it appears very weird you know that why would you mop the floor when you have a phd degree with you for example you know just kind of giving an example but to me it appears relevant to me it appears useful and to me uh, my inner knowing says that no i have to be here because it feels right so there is no reason there that is working that's what appears to me when mother uses the last line that to the outer consciousness it may appear very bold and most dangerous even dangerous at times and as jishnu ji was sharing that it doesn't have to be really dangerous in the sense that it just weird it does not make sense you know but it makes sense to you so following that inner knowing inner calling you know and then mother continues uh, yeah ashpriya does that make any sense uh, whatever was shared on this yeah a lot of sense to be honest you know there are times when we feel that oh this is this is being read just for me this is so relevant right now that you know i feel that oh i'm mean, good that i attended this session today i'm mean, this is really the answer which probably i was looking for it's so relevant thank you thank you for uh, explaining and sharing thank, thank you. you yeah and then you know mother comes back to it again how simple everything you know we all have tasted that simplicity all of us you know how simple everything is for him who sees all things from the height of the eternity it's not that we have not been there but it's just that we have to maintain put effort in that continuity no matter how many times we may go here there and sway and up down in the waves doesn't matter because all of that is also necessary so that simplicity when we touch in our being when we are identified not wanting anything desiring anything from the life just being is enough there you know it appears very simple how simple everything is for him who sees all things from the height of thy eternity i hail thee o lord with a joyful and trusting devotion may the peace of thy divine love be with all beings i think this is something which comes in mother's prayer again and again that she doesn't ever demand the peace for her she demands it for everyone all the beings and i think it's something which one has to learn i i feel that we normal ordinary human beings why can't we you know uh, whenever we are suffering we find ourselves in complication you know uh, egoistic complications so recognizing that suffering and inhaling all the suffering that people may be going through through those complications as i am suffering and may peace be for all you know why why can't we also do that i think we also must be able to do that and it also clicks it's it shifts the inner consciousness immediately we shift from an egoistic state to a state of simplicity whenever we uh, connect with all the beings and wishing peace for all no matter your enemy or you know friend doesn't matter you know to all the beings who are alive and all the sentient beings so i think this is a beautiful inspiration which comes again and again uh, with mother's prayers and meditations wishing wellness for all of us yeah yeah any any addition any anyone wants to share anything actually uh, you know this when we were talking about uh... in a body you know the the fact that in this continuity and uh, uh, and intuition intuitively doing things and you know being connected to body uh you know it isn't at all easy i mean uh, there are other uh, therapies or yoga or you know uh, you know body movement therapies and all that and i have been a part of that and those are you know asked from outside right like like they tell you that you know do this and you know spontaneous movements and all of those things and we used to do it but yet you know that that connection uh, uh, i did not feel um, main, most of the times when i was you know when i was doing those sessions or in the class uh, because it is very difficult very very difficult because we have lost the touch for so many years that we have it, it is it is a pitiful thing that we have lost the touch but it is a fact that we have i mean uh, maybe after you know you know a lot of effort it is gradually kind of coming where i feel that you know if i'm doing certain things and i'm not really liking that thing 
my body kind of tells me but uh, you know it is not at all easy and it is a very um, sad thing that we are no more you know in that state which probably we are originally born with or we are we are originally that that kind of uh, effortless spontaneity is is our birth right truly but we don't we have forgotten so i could you know relate to that part really well and the other part is the fact that you know um the fact that we 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 are so fearful of things and this world has made us such such uh, you know extremely scared timid you know fearful people that we are not ready to do things which we really uh, you know uh, which is from within or you know and like you know which are so called impractical uh, we we don't want to take that step and if if we do really take that step there is a there is a kind of happy feeling but still we are not you know it's not so easy or we are not we are scared to take that uh, step you know these are two things which i felt yeah 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 thank you so much ashpriya yes i think we have uh, we have so much to do you know <laughs> there's so much effort uh, so much yeah. yeah yeah so i think it also gives us happiness that we will never be unemployed you know this so much that is to be done yeah to yeah. come back to that uh, spontaneity requires so much of effort yeah <laughs> yeah great yeah anyone anything to add on okay so i i assume that there is no further reflection and in that case thank you everyone for sharing reflecting so beautifully all the beautiful reflections sharings thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye bye bye, bye. bye.